And the main man himself, Enda, is with me here in the studio. How's it going? Well, Dylan, how are you getting on? I'm doing quite well. I'd like to thank you um, very much for coming on. It's not that often that we get someone live in person into the studio. Uh, good stuff, man. Happy I suppose to, happy it's, to be here. it's a good kind of send off to the show for the year, I suppose. Is this the last show? It is. Ah, good stuff, man. Um, yeah, so I suppose just kind of get just kind of get us started. For those that don't know, uh, how would you kind of describe your music? Um, the Lush, my project is it's kind of like R and B, I guess R and B or soul, a little bit of hip hop influences. I work with hip hop artists sometimes, and um, yeah, I guess I try to write songs that inspire self knowledge. Uh, when you inspire, when you say self knowledge, do you yeah. mean like getting people to kind of think about themselves, kind of way, or is it like? Uh, is it kind of like just think about deeper things in general? Exactly, yeah, yeah, both those things. Like, what what maybe inspired me most about the music that I loved was was that it got me to realize things about myself. You know what I mean? Like, um, or just describe something in a way that I could just grasp it in a new light. You know what I mean? I, I find that really special when music can do that. So, so I suppose your kind of mindset would be like, music is kind of like. Well, I suppose it is an art form. No one really would deny that. Yeah. But um, really kind of look at it through that perspective yeah, yeah. and get people to kind of, I suppose, reevaluate, for lack of better words. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like um, take people into a different kind of perception of what's what's real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, could you tell us what kind of got you started on the whole project and what got you started in music in general, maybe? Um. The the first time where I thought like oh, I'm supposed to do music was I was in Porto, in in Portugal. I okay. went traveling on my own because I was just about to start a job in an accounting company, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I had a four year contract ahead of me, and um, and I was just traveling there on my own, and I just realized then I'm supposed to do music. I had my guitar there, and I just just the feeling came to me super strong, very clear, like you're supposed to do music. And that was very inconvenient at the time because I'd never released a song or played a show. Okay. And I was, yeah, and I had this four-year contract ahead of me. So I was like, what am I going to do with this? But you can't really deny those things for too long. So even on the first day of that job, I was like, oh, no way am I going to be able to do four years here. So after, after I think it was eight months or something, I really knew like I can't continue this, you know? Yeah. And a friend of mine told me about this Masters in UL, like where... It's basically a master's in music technology. Oh, yeah. And it's like one year, really intense. So you can really like learn a, a huge amount in one year, which was attractive to me because I felt I was kind of starting late. You know what I mean? I was about 22, I suppose, at that point, which is late enough to be starting in music. Okay. And uh, so I I uh, I applied that night and uh, they, it was actually two weeks late for the application date. But uh, the person who was... I called I called the person who was in control of that kind of stuff and she said, Look, just just do it tonight because the interviews are tomorrow. Like she whatever whatever it was about it, she just felt she should give me a chance, which was amazing. So I stayed up like all night, did the application and I got into the course. So All right, good stuff. Um mm. you say when you were starting the job that that you just kind of felt like you had your guitar there, you were like, No, I need to be doing music. Yeah. Uh, did you, did you would you consider yourself to have much practice beforehand or was it just kind of like a, a sudden calling kind of thing? It was definitely a sudden clarity, I suppose. You know, as in yeah. the way the way like I had been living life and probably a lot of people live life is like it doesn't leave too much time for just sitting in silence and just having a good reflection on things and Yeah. So I'd been really busy, you know, with just doing sports, you know, as a teenager and doing mm. like, you know, doing school and doing all that kind of stuff. And you're kind of just rushing from thing from one thing to another, you know, for most of that time. And then you go into college and it's pretty similar, you know. And so I think I think that the best times of reflection have came when I had kind of silence, you know what I mean? So traveling on my own that time was a perfect opportunity to to have some clarity, you know what I mean? So I had I had been I had been working on music and I had been writing songs since since I was twelve or something. But something in my something in my mind was just never considering that as a possible way to go properly. Okay. You know what I mean? And then so it was just on that trip where it was really like, yeah, that's no, that's actually supposed to supposed to be what you're gonna do for your life, you know what I mean? And when you entered the course, did you find it difficult or like I suppose you just kinda got on with it? 
it was really difficult like uh because i'd never studied basically any of that stuff before right and um so and it's a master's level so anyway it's really challenging you know what i mean so yeah it was really difficult i had to learn a lot of programming for the first time like a lot of music technology software like a lot of recording oh yeah software yeah, yeah. And the whole kind of it side to it like, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. like also programming stuff with maximus p and the different kind of music softwares and stuff are okay. pretty, pretty pretty difficult but no, it was, it was amazing. Yeah, it was class. Like, I worked really hard because I just really wanted it. You know what I mean? So, so it ended up being totally grand. But, yeah, it was, of course, difficult. But I was loving it, to be honest. Was there a particular moment that you felt things were kind of kicking off in terms of your career? Um, Not like... Not like a moment per se, but there's been a steady... There's been an ever kind of increasing stream of little moments you know what i mean okay so first thing would have been i suppose you just play an open mic and someone offers you a gig you know that's yeah. maybe like six or seven years ago and that's a cool little moment to have because you kind of think oh it must be not so bad you know what i mean um so that was nice and then you know in the last few years i was i was really helping other people to produce their music you know before i focused mm. on mine so the kind of successes that i had with those like kind of became more and more as well like I produced a track for an artist that I was producing called Kid Simeus, and I co-wrote the track as well. And that ended up getting remixed by Paul Kalkbrenner, who's a su- super big name in, in Germany and probably most of the world. That was kind of cool, you know, stuff like that started happening or or I'd produce and write some songs for a band and they'd get a, a few million streams or a remix of that would get a load of streams. And okay. those are kind of nice little moments, but I don't really dwell on those too much. Like, I, I'm really excited about what I'm doing day to day and just yeah. getting creative. And that's, that's it's more about I, the experience kind of way. Yeah, definitely. I think the, I think the little moments of like, of like little okay. success, clear successes, uh, they're kind of nice, you know, but honestly, they don't really do anything for you in the long term. So you can I kind of enjoy them and then I let them go, you know, yeah. same with failures. And you mentioned the um, artist that you worked with in Germany. Mm. You currently live there. Is that correct? Yeah. I live in Berlin. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what kind of inspired that move? I was down in Limerick, so after I finished that master's, I was like, I was kind of preparing my songs and whatnot, just living in, I was living out in Castle Troy, and I was just working on songs, and I was working just to save up some money, and uh, I had, I had two friends, basically, who, who were making a living off music in Berlin, just playing acoustically on the streets, I was like, that's crazy that you can even do that, like, actually have that as your job, you know, Hmm. so, you know, and I didn't think they were particularly advanced musicians or something you know it wasn't like these guys were the best musicians you've ever met or something you know what i mean so okay. i was like wow the city must be crazy you know so I, I took a trip over visited them and played a couple of open mics and stuff and i was like oh the fucking the city's really great like you know it was minus 12 degrees when i went over there it was like february so that was a bit weird but like the city was really great man really exciting things happening there a lot of artists it's pretty cheap to live you know you can afford to live there and yeah, man, I got, I just got inspired by it, and I, I felt like this is, this is, this is the place. You know what I mean? Do you feel like there's many um, differences, like cultural differences, say uh, between audiences in Germany and the like, and here in Ireland? Yeah, definitely. Like one of the most, when you go to shows here and you go to shows there, one of the biggest differences is that people go mental here <laughs> okay. at shows. You know right, what I mean? Okay, a bit more civil over there, is it? Oh, way more civil. Yeah. So like, I went to in my first year over there. I went to there was a Radiohead concert, and yeah, I went there and had a, had a, had a kind of a, it was in kind of like an outdoor amphitheater type, type space. Right. And, uh, so I kind of had a, had a, had a place where I was looking down at the whole crowd and like, you know, Tom York's going mental on the stage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody in the audience was just standing there looking at him. And in Ireland, you had the feeling that like people would just be going mad. You know what I mean? Like people would be dancing or moving around a lot. You know what I mean? Going wild. But there they really just take it in, you know, they're more, more chilled out. Okay. And so... Yeah, I think Irish people get very loose at gigs, and that's I like that a lot. And I suppose I'm sorry to kind of change the subject here, no but while we're on the subject of Berlin and all yeah. that, like your new EP is called Live at the GRS. Yeah, is Studio in the name? Yeah, Studio Berlin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, do you kind of feel like this is kind of a break neck moment, for lack of better words? Do you think that was very hard to kind of get this out, or is it just like a project? That's this EP. Been, yeah. So. Um, yeah, we did it in a studio called Jazanova Recording Studios. Okay. And uh, so there's a band called Jazanova and the guy Axel from, from Jazanova set up a gorgeous studio 
Amazing. So we did video. We did video there. And actually, what happened was, I'm I'm making an album at the moment, and I booked like four days in the studio. And my idea was like, I understand that it's nice to involve people in the process with visuals and stuff, but I I personally don't like it that much. I think it interferes. All right. So I booked three days in the studio where I was like, there's no phones, there's no recording it. In yeah, any, so you just in locked yourself in. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. And so as a kind of a compromise, I said, or not as even as a compromise, but just because I do appreciate then having having something to look back on. Yeah. You know what I mean, so I said, OK, let's just do this fourth day in this other studio and we just make it then about doing videos. OK. And I actually didn't really intend that we'd release something from this day, but we ended up doing three songs and they turned out amazing. Like we just had a great vibe. We spent most of the day sitting down and just waiting for us to feel like playing okay you know because we were very tired also after like three 12 hour days in a row and then mm. this was the fourth day you know so we were tired but like there was a really good vibe so i was just mostly just sitting down and then i i kind of started to realize like oh yeah it's time it's time to time to just do it felt natural kind of way totally and and uh yeah so basically i went in there with just the idea that we'd get some a little bit of video just for me to look back on or to share with people and ended up getting like three versions of those songs that I, I, I really love so I, that's why I wanted to put them out uh, very nice and do you have any kind of particular plan when it comes to getting the album out or is it just kind of whenever it happens um, it's a little bit whenever it happens but I do have a date in mind like I, I'd love to release it in February next year okay Um, and I'd love to finish it this summer mm. so those are the kind of dates that I have in mind I'm thinking of I'm coming back to um to Ireland to play some shows in uh, June. Yeah. We could play um, Bellow Bar on the 7th of June and play La Hinch on the 4th of June, I think, and I play a gig down in Allenwood in Kildare on the 1st. And I'm, I'm tr- maybe going to organise a Limerick date actually as well after just hanging nice. out with all the Limerick lads for, for the last few days. Um, but then I'm going to come back maybe again at the end of June and just spend 10 days again in just some some house somewhere, you know what I mean? Yeah. Down the countryside and, and kind of work on everything and yeah, get everything recorded. Very nice. Can you tell us actually what you've been doing in Limerick in the past week or so? Yeah, basically, um, I work a lot with an artist called uh, Strange Boy. Is, is his artist's name? He's formerly known as Jonan DK. Okay. Or Jordan Kelly is his real name. Uh, he's a rapper from from Limerick. Unbelievable rapper. Very nice. He's fantastic. And so we made a track together that's coming out in May. That's the one. It's all right. And uh, the, we shot the video for that last year. And I'm just editing it, editing it, editing it with, um, it's like called Brown Sauce. He's like an animator, filmmaker. Okay. And Can't uh, say I'm too familiar now. But, yeah. um, He's good. He made yeah. the series called Somewhere in Ireland. All right. It's really, really good. Also with, with, with rappers based in Limerick. So I came down here and met with all them. Just, you know, reconnect with Jordan and whatnot. And and uh, worked a little bit with Brown Sauce and, and caught one of their shows in town. So. All right. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to rush you, but we're nearly out of time. Don't worry, man. Um, I suppose just to kind of wrap things up, if the students in Limerick are looking for more from you, where yeah. can they find it? Um, obviously, just check out my Spotify or my YouTube. I've another. I've got that slow your attention track coming out tomorrow. Well, on very all, nice on all platforms. So, yeah, just follow me on Instagram or Facebook, and I'll let you know. I'll hopefully have a gig in Limerick in the next little while. So, yeah. That's probably okay, the best. Well, job. thanks very much. And uh, from Delush, this is definitely a space to watch. Thank you very much for coming on. Thanks, Dylan. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dylan.